Ladies and gentlemen, what an exciting opportunity to be here this evening. We are here to launch the website of the NCU International Development Foundation. And, you know, in Jamaica they say, if shrimp, and that's my version, if shrimp come from a river bottom and tell you, say, alligator, we're false to eat, believe him. And so we're here to talk about something exciting this evening, and I am so happy to be in the company, I'm not going to call him a shrimp, but him come from river bottom, <laughs> and he certainly knows quite a bit. You see, my co-host tonight is a product of Christian education. He went from primary school straight through to uh, first year at Northern Caribbean University. He is the son of the indomitable Taron Milford, and I know so many alums remember him, serving in various administrative positions, including Provo and uh, Vice President for Student Services. His mother is a graduate of Northern Caribbean University and also a staff member. His siblings are graduates of Northern Caribbean University. And so you know, all his skin knees were up on the campus of Northern Caribbean University. That's where it all happened for him. So if him tell you about it, you know it's for real. And today, my co-host, Theodore Milford, left Jamaica in 2004 to attend the Howard University, where he achieved his bachelor's degree, then on to George Washington, and today proudly serves as the Vice President for Engineering and Construction in the D.C. area. So, you think you can believe him? <laughs> well, Patrice is being very nice. Um, she began her, her tenure at NCU over 31 years ago as an associate professor in the science department, matriculated through um, leading groundbreaking research um, on the effort of sorrel and cancer, and that placed NCU on the map. Um, she's very kind to speak about me being a shrimp because she actually taught me when I attended NCU and re re kind of refresh my memory on a story that I won't share here tonight. Oh, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, Patrice is a, a stellar um, scientist and now follows her husband around the world, serving the church and youth ministry, as well as she's a profound program coordinator and media personality. So tonight you're in for a, a quite a treat. Um, we're going to have a candid conversation. I really am going to be co-host because I'm in the presence of the real host. <laughs> you know, Theo, I am very excited to be here tonight because it's in Jamaica, there is a phenomenon that those of us, anywhere in Jamaica you live, you understand. You know you want to catch a taxi or the bus and you take it going up so that you can get a comfortable seat when it's coming back down. You just want to get in there at the very, very beginning. And that's what this is all about. All of you, my listeners, you have the opportunity to come on the ride up so that you are first in line when the launch of the Development Foundation happens. So you are right there, Theo, it's right? True. You it's might true. get a little squeeze now, but the comfortable ride coming down. It's, it's coming, it's, it's coming. It's so nice to have you here this evening. It's wonderful because you are a participant in something that is not just novel. Yeah. It's good to be at the foundation of it That's all. Correct. But more importantly, your name goes down in history mm -hmm. as one who gave the push start mm -hmm. You think about the bobsled team, you know, Come on. Come on. <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. That, that push start. You have the front seat. You have that opportunity, Theo, to be a part of something that God ordained yes. and is going to be just spoken about so brilliantly yeah. in years to come. Yeah, so no. I'm, I'm just so happy all my, my, my listeners and audience members and people across the world are taking this opportunity to jump in the taxi. Yeah, no, this is, this is going to be something special. It is our hope as we um, continue through this program tonight that you really um, learn and understand the true meaning behind this foundation and what this website will allow for you to achieve with every single dollar. You know, I think about Jesus and John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the forerunner 
who spoke about what was coming. Mm -hmm. So you are in the place of the forerunner tonight. Mm -hmm. This is the launch of the website which will speak about what is to come. Mm -hmm. And it opens your opportunity, your, your, your purses, your hearts, your passion to what you can be a part of. That's great. It's so great to have you here. So we're going to run off, uh, Theo, because some people are not aware mm -hmm. of what the NCU International Development Foundation is all about. Tonight, we're going to share stories with them. We're going to share information. We're going to share greetings. We're going to share testimony. We're going to hear from some of them shrimp from River Bottom. Yeah, there's a little <laughs> entertainment in there, too. Yes, right? sure. There. Sure, so sure. Yeah. So stay tuned. You cannot afford to miss a beat of this. And, and you need to share this with somebody. Mm -hmm. Call somebody, tell them what's happening, and be a part of the ride going up to come back down. Good. I don't know how much, Theo, you know about the foundation. What, what do you know about the foundation? You know, I, I will say this. It's better for me not to tell the story and let the brains behind the foundation share it. What do you think about that? You know, you're really taking this river bottom thing <laughs> much further than I thought. <laughs> and we are not going to call the Honorable Dr. Melbourne a shrimp at all. No, but no, no, no. He coming no. from river bottom, <laughs> way down there. So let's invite Dr. Mel Dr. Melbourne on stage to tell us some more details about why we're here tonight. What is this foretelling? What is the website for? Ah, he's so dapper. Doc, how you doing? You hearty. <laughs> so, Theo, you know this gentleman? Well, you know, here, here's what I know. I, I believe. This is what I heard. In 1964, Doc, you attended NCU, was, well, yes. West Indies. Um, West Indies College then. West Indies College then. Um, and then about two years later, you graduated with a diploma, correct? A diploma in arts and science, that's correct. All right, so then in 1968, that's two years after that, you went back. Well, I went back in 1966 and graduated in 1968. Okay, there it is. So better you tell the story than me, right? So then you entered <laughs> ministry um, and, and the ministry for about 10 years. And after that 10-year period, you were invited to teach back yeah. at NCU in about 1978. 1978, that's correct. Interesting. So the, the, the bottom line is everything that he shares is before I was born. So I want to be very clear. You got to listen to him. I don't know nothing. So Doc, and, and he, 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 he is not telling you that our relationship goes way back because I taught his dad. That's correct. Imagine that's that. That's Imagine correct. that. That's correct. So that's you know correct. they say to the third and fourth generation, so whatever he didn't do to his dad, he can do to you. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Uh, Melbourne, I know you've had a long stint with NCU, but this is now, I think, time for you to relax. Why are you working so hard on this new project? Well, one of my, <laughs> interestingly, one of my teachers taught us it's better to uh, burn out than rust. <laughs> rust out. So uh, that's one thing. But personally, I have seen, including my own father-in-law who retired, and died within six months of retirement. Mm. So I made a decision way back when that I would work for as long as I can. As long as my students are getting something and I am making a difference, I will be there. Wise decision. It was another alum, um, Aston Barnes, who told me that one of the worst inventions of this time is retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, Doc, your, your involvement takes you beyond the classroom. You've been there, done that, administration, mm -hmm. loving and supporting students. But you've now turned another chapter, and you are leading this bandwagon to put NCU on a, a higher level. Tell us about it. Uh, that's interesting. And let me just add before I get to the foundation that I actually chair three boards. And all three has to do with scholarship, scholarshiping and education. And as a matter of fact, all three benefit NCU. Wow. Yeah. But uh, interestingly, if you want the genesis of this organization, 
the, the board, the foundation, uh, for the last uh, probably 30-something years, uh, we invite individuals, the ambassadors and others from the embassy to join us for our NCU days. And that one that was held at Tacoma Academy, the ambassador heard for the first time the financial needs of NCU. And as I was walking her to her car, she said to me, how come you never told us, you never told me about the problems with NCU? Oh, wow. I am interested. Why don't you set up a meeting to come so we can talk about it. And so she invited Dr. Morris, Dr. Milton Morris, Dr. Rue McKenzie, uh, President Lincoln Edwards, and myself to meet with her. We met with her. We had a discussion. Out of that discussion, we had another meeting over two days at the embassy, wow. including all the chapter presidents who could attend and some joined us by Zoom. The, feder the, the Federation president also was included. And out of those discussions, the foundation was born. And, and, and the basic idea that the ambassador was sharing is this. She has been supporting so many educational institutions in Jamaica, trying to help them to get the funds they need for sustainability. Why not NCU as well? That's beautiful to consider because the Right Excellency Audrey Marks is not an alum of NCU, is she? She didn't attend NCU. No, she, she didn't. She did not attend NCU, no. And therefore, it is just such a poster for involvement in this effort. You don't have to have graduated from there. You don't, have to, you, you don't have to have anything to show of physical, tangible association with the university. You just have to love the work that is done at the university and partner. And I'm so happy that that's a part of the, the inception. It makes everyone a potential candidate for joining with us. That's right. Now, talk to us a little bit about where you see this foundation bringing tremendous value, though to NCU, the, the, the vision is birthed. We now have this website that we're launching. Where, where do you really see this going? Well, uh, that's an interesting question, Theo. And I would respond to it this way. Uh, by making a comparison, there are individuals who have asked, why do we need a foundation like this when we already have alumni associations? Yes. And we have the federation. Why do we need this? And the interesting response to that question is that if you look at the universities across the world, you will see that many, if not all of them, they have alumni associations that make their input, but they also have a development foundation that is responsible for raising funds for the institution. So there is scope for both sets to coexist, one. Secondly, I, I would say, when it comes to the alumni associations and the federation, from my days on the foundation board, uh, way back when, from the days of uh, Dr. Adrian T. Wesney, um, I would always hear the presidents of the alumni associations and the members talk about wanting to support the institution, but they always talk about scholarships, giving scholarships for students. I cannot recall attending a meeting where I have heard someone talk about making contributions that will help to the infrastructure of the institution yes. and some of the areas 
that really have the great needs. Yes. You mean you're so talking about I see hot water? the foundation being able to meet those kinds of needs of the institution, providing funds that will go for more than scholarship, but will be for the sustainability of the university. Yes. So you're talking about hot water in the bathrooms and windows and doors? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, interestingly, I was just speaking yesterday to the president of the, fa the Federation, uh, Dr. Harry Clayton, and he is on board with this. He's excited about the partnership. Yep. He recognizes how well you can work together and is actually planning a town hall meeting so that those individuals who are not absolutely clear as to the synergy between both organizations, that it will become very, very clear. But he is absolutely excited about giving his support. Because as you said, there is room for both. That is correct. Yes. And um, might as well say this. Ever since, I mentioned before, that at the foundational meetings, we had chapter presidents and we had the then president of the Federation present. Yes. As a matter of fact, when we were constructing the board of the foundation, we made slots on the board open and available for the foundation, I'm sorry, for the Federation president, who is a member of the board, mm -hmm. and for at least two chapter presidents at a time. Wonderful. That's, that's a nice, inclusive way. So those who are uh, who have attended Northern Caribbean University or have that kind of connection, they have their seats guaranteed. And those who have not, all those corporate entities, those big companies who've never heard of NCU, the foundation will now take them, give them a guided tour and opportunity to be a part of our product. That is correct. So let me say it this way. Let me say it very uh, plainly. The, 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 the Federation and the chapters will continue to raise their funds and use their funds for scholarships yes. as they have been doing because our students really need those scholarships. As a matter of fact, the foundation will not itself be raising funds for scholarships because the federation and yes. the chapters are doing that. Mm -hmm. The only scholarship program that we are supporting and funding at the moment is the rescue program. Okay. okay. But other than that, we will be doing the heavy lifting that will be going, say, for example, the dental hygiene center mm -hmm. for infrastructure. Uh, I've heard people say to me from time to time, the dorms. How can I send somebody from North America to Northern Caribbean University where there's not running? Oh, I don't want to go into that, you know? So Sing and so. It, man. It's a part of the fabric. It's a yeah. part of the fabric. If, you'd, if you have been to Northern Caribbean University and you don't scream when you shower, you probably have not been there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So the idea is we need new dormitories yes. that will be able to provide the kind of facilities that will make the institution attractive to students from overseas. That kind of heavy lifting, the foundation can do. So, so Doc, correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is, this is a, a website launch of something that has been in place for the last couple of years. Um, is it correct that you've raised over, what is it, 200? Over $200,000 uh, thus far in, to the aid of NCU. That is correct in founders. cash and kind. And kind. That, that, that is commendable. Now, yeah. um, given the fact that you are so focused on infrastructure, I, I recognize, and we'll get into this um, as a part of the program, that there are these specific projects that we currently have on deck. Um, how will the foundation go about in the future in terms of adding or, 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 or updating the projects that it takes on? Well, we have done that in connection with the university administration. We get our lead from them in terms of the areas of need and consequently the areas that we need to fund. And as a matter of fact, the, the, the president is a member of the board and there is an executive that meets every week and he attends those executive meetings and he has his input. There are other members of the, uh, the, his cabinet that also attend, yes. I know my 
audience appreciates my opening statement that Theo is from the river bottom. He's getting everything out of him, but that's what the website is there for. So anything you missed, you can head straight there. Thank you, Dr. Melvin, for having shared with us this evening. Now we know what it is that we are launching, what it is that we're getting into, and we are excited to, have been, to be a part of it. Now, you spoke warmly about Her Excellency Ambassador Audrey Marks, and I am happy that she is a part of this function. She is not currently here, but there is a representative who will speak to us at some time. So, the vision and mission of the Federation is already out there. The vision and mission of the foundation yes. is going to be open to everyone and for everyone to see and to participate. What is your wish tonight as you sit here? What is your wish for those who are listening? I would like for them to buy into the vision, which is to have a financially sustainable and academically healthy NCU. I'd like them also to buy into the mission, which is to mobilize people and resources to support the advancement of NCU. And what we're saying by that, and what I mean by that then is, I'd like to invite those who are listening, to join in. As you said, get into the taxi, get in on the bus, to be able to help us, to be able to deliver a financially stable NCU that will be there for future generations. Thank you, Doc. Now, Theo, uh, I know there are people like your dad, Ezra Fido, Milton Gregory, Ronnie Henry, who knows what it's like to go to the market early when the products are just coming in. And they can tell our listeners what it's like to go get the first pick. And that's why you're here. The Bible speaks about having a light and putting it under a basket or a bushel. It's, it wouldn't be wise. Nobody does that. And that's what the website is all about. We've got a bright light. And the website is about establishing this light on a pedestal so that we can understand and be a part of something great. There is a lady who is not formally affiliated with NCU in Othio. And she's done this for Jamaica. She has experience doing this. And as a supporter, is excited about being an integral part of this launch this evening. Tell us about her. Well, everybody, I want you to, to prepare yourself for some presentations spearheaded by Deborah Earhart. She produced her first award-winning play, um, Mango Mango and Invisible Cheers, which was later produced by David Strasberg at the Marilyn Monroe Theater. Um, in West Hollywood. Um, she is also a 2007 N NYC Fringe Festival Award winner and received the 2007 proclamation from the City of New York for Jamaica Farewell, um, her outstanding contribution to the Jamaican community. Tonight we're going to have a series of stories, essentially a part of this What's Your Story Jamaica series. Um, the first story that you'll actually hear in a moment is a monkey named Mike. I want you to turn your attention now as we listen to this story that we will um, continue to speak about. Good evening, everyone. I am Deborah Earhart and very excited to be part of this program tonight and to congratulate NCU International Development Foundation on their website launch. NCU has always been a big presence in my life 
as well as for many others in Jamaica and the Caribbean. For years, they have delighted us with the most memorable classical and religious music. And as far back as I can remember, every pastor from my church came from NCU. I remember when I was almost 17 years old, I visited their campus in Mandible for the first time when it was West Indies College with my girlfriend, Deanne, who was checking out their nursing program. I wondered how she was going to afford it as we both came from families with gambling fathers. During her interview, I wandered around checking out the beautiful campus. It must have been obvious that I was a visitor as I heard a deep male voice. Can I help you? Are you lost? I turned around and my almost 17 year old heart skipped a beat when I saw the sweetest smile on the cutest face sitting on top of six foot two inches. I realized I was very lost. <laughs> Neil ended up showing me around the school and told me that many of the kids, including himself, were part of a work study program. He said that NCU provided a second chance for a lot of people who were financially disadvantaged to work their way through college and get an education. He even said that they accepted older students. They offered jobs in the bakery, the printery, the block factory and agricultural farming as well. I was so impressed. I mean, I knew it was a great school, but I had no idea the commitment that NCU gave to student aid to helping advance as many men and women as possible. This resulted in creating better opportunities that changed thousands of lives over the years. I found out that not only do they have an outstanding nursing school, they offer a seminary program and a business school as well. So, what are you pursuing, Neil? Thinking to impress me, he answered immediately, I'm studying to be a pastor. My heart sank. I knew from way back then, I didn't have what it took to be a pastor's wife. <laughs> My girlfriend ended up being extremely successful in the healthcare industry, and Neil is a pastor in the Cayman Islands. In fact, many of their graduates have gone on to very lofty professional careers. NCU is one of the most reputable universities in the Caribbean, not only because of what they offer their students, but because they really care about them. Today, I'm asking you all to support NCU with your generous donations so that they continue the amazing work that they do. This is a wonderful way for you to invest in the future of Jamaica and the Caribbean. Two years ago, I started an annual storytelling competition in Jamaica called What's Your Story, Jamaica? We have so much more to offer besides rum, reggae, and white sand beaches. We have a rich history of vibrant storytellers, and next month, Knock Alve Association and Hampton Legacy will present the recent 2023 What's Your Story Jamaica competition, so be on the lookout for that. Right now, it gives me great pleasure to present some of the winners from last year's competition as part of this very important launch. So, grab a cola champagne, relax, sit back, cock up your foot, and enjoy the stories from Jamaica. At seven years old, I became obsessed with having a monkey. I had seen a little girl carrying one around in a movie I had watched, and I couldn't get it out of my mind. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't even do my homework. Mom, I'm gonna die if I don't get a monkey. Oh, honey. There are no monkeys for sale in Jamaica. Why don't I get you a little hamster or a guinea pig? I don't want a rat. I want a monkey. 
Well then, I'll take you out to the zoo every Sunday so you can see the monkeys. Sundays are my favorite days. I race past all the other animals until I get to the monkey cage and I stand in front of them for hours watching them. What am I gonna do? I want one so badly. I come up with an idea. I am going to write the Prime Minister of Jamaica. He's in charge of the whole country and he can order the zookeeper to give me one. I'm not going to tell anybody though because they'll think I'm stupid and try to discourage me. So I get some pretty stationery from mommy, an envelope and a stamp, lock myself in the bathroom and begin my letter. Dear Mr. Manley, my name is Debbie Phillips, I'm seven years old and I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I would give anything in the world to have a monkey, but there are no monkeys for sale in Jamaica. Mommy says the only monkeys are at the zoo. Could you please make a quick call and order the zookeeper to give me one of them? You would make me the happiest little girl in the world. Thank you, Debbie Phillips. I address the envelope. Prime Minister Michael Manley, Jamaica House Kingston, put it under my shirt, come out to the bathroom, run to the end of the block, and mail the letter. Two weeks go by, not a word from the Prime Minister. I get some more pen and paper, pretty stationery, lock myself in the bathroom again. Dear Mr. Manley, I know you have a busy schedule, but I'm going to die if I don't get a monkey. Please take a moment and call the zookeeper and I promise I'll never bother you again. Debbie Phillips. I put the stamp on the envelope, run to the end of the block and mail the letter. Two more weeks go by and no letter from the Prime Minister, nothing. They're not giving him the letter. I wonder why. One more letter. I lock myself in the bathroom, get nice stationery and start to write again. Dear Mr. Manley, this is my third letter to you. I know you're busy running the country, but I need a monkey. I don't want to be a pest, but please don't forget about me. Debbie Phillips. P.S. I'm still your biggest fan. Ten days later, I'm playing in front of my house. My mother is sitting on a lawn chair with some of my friends. Say, say, oh, playmate. Come out and play with me. Through the corner of my eye, I see a black car turn the corner. No one drives those cars in Jamaica unless they're with the government. It's Mr. Manley. He's bringing my monkey. The black car pulls right up in front of my gate. Mom looks like she's going to faint. Everybody's in shock. The window winds down, and there is a well dressed man sitting in the front. Does a Miss Debbie Phillips live here? I run out in front. I'm Miss Debbie Phillips. Mom's about to faint. Nobody understands. Everybody thinks something is wrong, but I know something is right. He gets out of the car, he opens the trunk, and takes out a gigantic box and says, The Prime Minister said to give you this. Receive it thusly. Thusly? I've never heard that word before. Thank you, sir. And then he takes off. I rip open the box and there is a beautiful stuffed monkey wearing red overalls and there is a note pinned to him. It says, Dear Debbie, Yes, running the country is busy sometimes, so please forgive the delay. I am sorry I could not get you a live monkey. Your English is excellent and you seem a very bright and wonderful young miss. I am happy to be your new friend. Love, Mike! The Prime Minister wrote me and said, Love, Mike! I pick up the monkey and hug him so tight. He looks real, he feels real, and I'm gonna sleep with him forever. Guess what I named the monkey? Mike. Yes! <laughs> I learned from an early age to ask for all the things that I wanted. 
The only limitations that exist in our lives are the ones that we conceive of in our own heads. Do not be the first person to put the no in your head, okay? Dream big, dream big, and go after whatever it is that you want. And don't stop till you get your own monkey, okay? <laughs> this is my story. Uh, I was raised in a Christian family and attended Franklin Town Church of God religiously every Sunday. I always did good in school because I wanted to make my family proud. When I was given a scholarship to attend college in Kentucky, I was extremely happy and my family was overjoyed. I was one step closer to achieving my dream of becoming a lawyer. It was near the end of university and finances were running low. My father would do the best he could to make sure everything was okay, but things weren't really on the up and up. He was tied up with some bills and he had a new baby. I had a job working at the gym and I would get little delivery jobs here and there, but it still wasn't enough. I needed a couple thousand dollars to graduate. I had a car that my father had purchased. A little while back, this was his way of saying, keep up the good job, Andre, I'm proud of you. You know you can purchase a cheap car in America for under $500, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I was overjoyed when a friend of mine introduced me to some guys that needed someone with a car to do some driving. This was my opportunity to get the money I needed to graduate. For a minute I thought, things might not be on the up and up in a but I'll just be driving, so, and I needed the money to graduate, so I agreed. A couple days later, I picked them up and they directed me to drive to a location, park and just wait. So I did as I was told. As I sat there listening to music, I was in my thoughts when all of a sudden I saw them running towards me frantically with two boxes in hand. As they hopped in the car, they yelled, drive! I turned to them, what the hell is going on? But I sped off driving. I was nervous, I didn't know what to do. But seconds later, my belly button nearly dropped out when I saw police lights and I heard sirens in the background. They saw I felt like a nightmare, but guess what? I wasn't dreaming. The thought of actually running into a wall and killing myself crossed my mind, but I couldn't. I felt pee running down the side of my legs. I was nervous. But I kept on driving. Seconds later, I smelled weed coming from the boxes, which indicated we were indeed in some deep ish. I kept on driving and I made a right. This right wasn't a right turn, this was indeed a wrong turn. I realized we had turned onto a dead end. We were no corner, we know where to go. We all hopped out the car and started running. Freeze! The police yelled. But the police officer's cries fell on deaf ears. We kept on running but the police ran faster. <laughs> Seconds later, tears welled up in my eyes as I was knocked to the ground and I was handcuffed. Here I was, a final year university student, about to be sent to prison for my wrongful actions. The hurt in my father's eyes on my sentencing absolutely floored me. Here was this man that I looked up to as being brave, fearless and courageous breaking down in a courtroom in front of strangers because of my wrongful activities. I so desperately wanted to wipe the tears from his face, but I was unable to. This was my new reality. I had heard countless stories and watched movies about prison. Never did I imagine that I, at 21 years old, would be sent to prison myself. My first day as I walked into prison, you know, so I'm going to stop, I'm going to say a prayer. I said, dear Lord, do me a beg you. No one may turn nobody girlfriend in a prison. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I wasn't. I was placed in a cell with an older gentleman by the name of Mr. Blacks. He actually turned out to be a good friend and showed me the ropes of how to survive while being incarcerated. The six years was a hard one, but I made best of my time while there. It was there that I found my love for reading and writing, and in turn, penned my first two novels, High Rollers and Crooked Line. Upon completing my sentence, I was deported back to Jamaica, the land of my birth. I was overjoyed when I was given a chance to go live with the aunt and some cousins. I so desperately yearned for family and love. This was my chance to get that. Upon returning home, I applied for UWE, and guess what? I was accepted. This was indeed my second chance. You know, there's a stigma in Jamaica where they said that every deportee come back to mash up the country. 
I was not ever deported. I was determined to make right on my own, and I did. Along the way, I came across some awesome individuals that helped to make my dream a reality. One of which was Professor Bernard Headley, who gifted me my first job upon returning home. May God rest his soul. I stand before you today proud to say that four years later, I graduated with a degree in political science. I have since self-published three fictional novels and two children's books, of which I dedicate to my children, Andre, Joshua, and Soraya. I have assisted countless others with achieving their goal of being published authors also. I have a passion for helping others, and since, since then, I have begun a program titled Hidden Gems, where I go across the island interviewing young entrepreneurs as a means to give them a little push. My story is one that depicts endless possibilities once you push through the obstacles that will come your way. In closing, I would like to say that faith without works is dead, and your past should never define your future. My name is Andre. My story is a life turnaround, and thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Well done, well done. So what's your story, NCU? Andre actually mentioned the name Bernard Headley. Uh, Dr. B, you, you know that name? Yes. What, what do you know about uh, he, 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 he was a friend. Uh, I have been a friend of the family. His mother used to take care of me. As a matter of fact, his dad is from the same place, the same area of Jamaica where my mother is from. Wow, wow, wow. And incidentally, uh, Bernard Headley is a former professor of NCU. Yes. It goes yes. to show, it goes to show that the, the places where MCU has made some great imprints and implants. Yeah? That's right. Um, you know, Patrice, tell us a little bit more about this, this website. The website, it's, it's beautiful. And you know, in Jamaica we say, show me a company and I tell you who you are. I'm so happy to be associated with Deborah. And the stories that we hear is an indication of the kind of lives that you can invest in by being a part of this initiative. The website is your way in. That's what puts the light up. The website allows you to get in. So if they have several you an insight into why it's worth your investment. Come on. The greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. I was bold enough to make that first step, to garner what this beacon on the hill has to offer. It was filled with challenges, of course, but I stuck to the task. Thanks to the unique educational approach, caring lecturers, faculty, and staff members have made my journey on this blessed hill. NCU offers what no other university does. And because of that, today, four years later, I am empowered and ready to take on the challenges of life, knowing fully well that God will continue to lead me each step of the way. You know, I, I do want to add, um, you know, Mrs. Gordon mentioned earlier that I am now a senior vice president of a construction company, but I, my roots were birthed out of NCU. Um, and, and in like manner to what Mr. Roshane just shared, those roots helped me to get to where I am. NCU did not have an engineering program, but it had a pre-engineering program. That's right. And that pre-engineering program launched me to my mechanical engineering career. So, um, you know, we want to get a little bit more into some of these stories. What's your story, Jamaica? We have two stories that will be presented to you. New Page in My Life by David Brown and Reincarnation by Makina Sol Solomon. Turn your attention into my classroom at the Priory School, just in time to hear my science teacher announce that she was giving us the science test that she had promised to give us from the Friday before. Well, I had just finished a weekend of glorious fun and games and mischief making with my friends. Needless to say, I was so captivated by my activities that there was absolutely no time nor interest 
in studying or doing any homework. So I knew there was just no way I could pass that test. I wondered, what was I going to do? I didn't want to fail it. So I decided right then and there that I would just cheat. Just this one time. Nobody would ever know. I would make sure that I hid my notebook on my knees, under my desk, very, very carefully so that nobody could see it. The test began. And somehow I managed, although very nervous, I managed to navigate the, text, the notebook in such a way so that the answers flowed seamlessly from the pages of the notebook to the pages of my test. And so I knew I had answered all the questions correctly. My teacher, Mrs. Gonzalez, walked around and collected all the test pages. She then dismissed the class and everybody got up and ran out. Everybody left except for Mrs. Gonzalez and me. Somehow I sat in my seat. I just could not move. I started to feel guilty. My conscience was really bothering me. And I couldn't get up and leave like everybody else and be like the fun-loving, light-hearted person I was known to be. I sat there and I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I got up and walked slowly and shamefully to the front of the class. And I said, Miss, I'm so sorry, but I have something really bad to tell you. I just cheated on your test, Miss. I'm sorry, Miss. I was afraid. I expected something really bad to happen. But Mrs. Gonzalez looked at me and in her American accent, she said, David Brown, you don't need to do that. It was such a reassuring tone that somehow it calmed all my apprehensions and fears. And she said, David, go and bring me your notebook. So I walked to the class, the back of the class, of course, and picked up my notebook. It didn't matter to me that in the notebook were all sorts of rude jokes, bad words, graphically illustrated, and many, many unmentionables. I took the notebook, I handed it to her, and without even looking at what was on those pages, she took all those pages, folded them, and stapled them shut. She looked at me and she said, after turning over a fresh page, David Brown, as of today, you are going to start a new page in your life. I was relieved. I was so refreshed after hearing this. And she looked at me and she spoke to me with such tenderness and grace in her voice that I could see something so very beautiful, hope. And standing in the light of my teacher's belief that I could change and would change, hope sprung up within me. At that moment, I think I experienced the redemptive power of grace. And I have come to realize that each day that God in his grace gives us a new day and a new page on which to write our story. I'm David Brown, and that is my story. My brother, Wayne, is my best friend, my brethren. Though we're only two years apart, I look up to him. When we were children, I'd follow him and his friends around, go-karting, climbing, whatever, proudly earning my reputation as a tomboy. Much to my father's annoyance, who lamented the fact that I had no interest in domestic matters and would therefore not be able to keep a husband. 
<laughs> the only exception to my avoidance of the kitchen was when my brother would climb the abundant apple tree in our little English back garden. And my side of the bargain was to make the delicious apple crumble that he loved. I remember the day that my brother perched our younger sister Sharon's dolly in said tree as a joke. A real natural role model. My brother was head boy of his high school. He was the first black teller at the bank that scooped him up at the age of 18. He was charming, strikingly handsome, and adored by women young and old. Undoubtedly, he was the apple of my mother's eye, so I teasingly would call him Gabby, short for Gabriel, such the angel that he was. In 1982, four days after my 18th birthday, just after he'd signed the check to pay for the development of my birthday pictures, Wayne took sick. The family doctor declared him fighting fit. But within hours, while I frantically flicked through the pages of our medical encyclopedias, Wayne stopped breathing and died in front of my eyes. Bilateral adrenal hemorrhage. It didn't feel real. He was just 19. He would have turned 20 the following month. Just the night before, he was playfully sparring with me, practicing his martial arts punches, skillfully coming within inches of my eyelashes. Of course, our family was devastated. My mother, she never was the same after losing her firstborn. His bright light went out and I watched as her light went dim. <laughs> Our family of five was now four. After a brief hospitalization for what they called nervous stomach, I took on a determination, a passion to make the most of the life that I had. Call it a living for the both of us pact. I also decided that I wanted to have lots of children just in case one of them died. Fast forward to 2001. I'd been living in Jamaica for six years and was just about coming to terms with both the British and the Jamaican medical fraternities prognoses that I could not conceive. Blocked tubes. But I knew different. Something inside of me, this Cancerian, nurturing Cancerian woman knew that I would become a mother and specifically to a boy child just like the picture that I pasted to my vision board at a corporate retreat the year before. On New Year's Eve 2001, after 16 hours hard labor, my son Ray Alexander Menelik was born. His father told me that he too had visioned him. I was ex statically happy. One evening, when Ray was about eight years old, I was reading him a bedtime story, and my brother flashed into my mind. You see, when we were little and we shared a room, my brother insisted that I told him bedtime stories. He called them dream. Tell me some dream! He would pester and I would have to make up stories out of nowhere, usually involving the children in our community. <laughs> he would laugh when the neighborhood bully got his comeuppance, so I would embellish those parts of the story. So I said to Ray, 
This reminds me of when I used to tell your Uncle Wayne bedtime stories when we were children, without a pause. And in the most matter-of-fact voice, my son said, Mommy, you know he had to go so that I could come. I froze. I stared at him in amazement. I'd never heard him say such a profound and categoric thing. And then I felt a serene, comforting acceptance of his declared truth. In 2014, at my mother's funeral, my brother's best friend, who later became my boyfriend, he said that he couldn't take his eyes off Ray. It was like seeing Wayne in the flesh all over again. There's no doubt in my mind that my brother's spirit lives on. Ray, who incidentally also was nominated head boy at his high school, he turned 20, December, just gone. I am Makeda Solomon, and my story is reincarnation. Wow, nothing like a good story, eh? Um, we we want to pause and just thank everyone online and here for coming out tonight. We're, we're getting towards that latter end of the program. When my dad was alive, you would call it landing the plane. We're about to get to that close moment of landing the plane. But we certainly want to thank everybody that came out tonight and those on the, on the, on the, on the, on the um, internet and viewing online for just joining with us. We have a couple more things we want to do, but I really felt I need to thank you right now. Yes, it's, it's really essential that we thank them. I recognize that there are individuals from the Pacific Coast. Dr. Wigan is on. There are people from uh, Bermuda who are on. Because NCU has impacted the world all, all over. There are people in the Virgin Islands right now who I know are watching, and I know that NCU's uh, immediate environs that they're all watching and listening, and we have such wonderful guests here this evening who I can tell, Yvonne, that you are enjoying this evening's program. Yeah, Dr. Rue, it's so nice to have you here with us. And we are so grateful that all of you gracious people have come to uh, celebrate and to jump in the taxi while it's going up. <laughs> you know, um, Theo, as I look on the website, I'm absolutely excited. And I know that our audience members live and, and virtual are anxious to get on the site themselves. The, the site is broken down into the home page, Ways to Give, Why I Give, NCU Celebration Gardens, and the NCU Legacy Project. And the most important part right now, because I just, I just when I think about memorable things about Jamaica, one of the things that comes to my mind is um, the bobsled team. And you know what it's like to start off before you start cruising down that hill you got to get that push that initial push and i know there are individuals right now who want to get their hand on the sled so that they can give that good push and this is how you do it when you when as soon as we open the page you go to how can i give and you choose an ncu project because we don't just want you to give we want you to be invested in the process. We want you to look at the different projects and we want for you to identify the one that resonates with you. There are so many different projects, Doc, that you spoke. You want to remind us of one or two other projects? Uh, the rescue program. Right. Yes. There is the dental lab. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have en endowed scholarships yes. for, I'm sorry, endowed cheers. What is that? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, the idea is that what we'd like to do is to fund uh, the cheers of certain departments at certain levels that we will be able to attract good people. What has happened, as many may know, the take for example the IT department, you know, the computer science department that was involved in the Imagine Cup. Mm -hmm. Those individuals that spearheaded that department are no longer there. 
Okay. Because so why do you think, NCU you could not keep up with the salaries that other institutions were okay. offering them. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if we are able to have an endowed chair, to set aside funds at a certain level, we will be able to attract people. Okay, so, so if I go on the website and I decide to give to the project of endowing a chair, right. I am actually committing to the scholastic arm of the university of that building the, 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 the caliber of the, the people who we are able to attract. That's right. But you also have some other infrastructure projects as well. Boy, yeah. Theo, that, that cold water thing really gets into you now. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's important that we highlight where the needs that's, that's are right. as well, right? right. That's very um, important. Can you speak to, to speak to any of these, the Center for Public Policy? Oh, the Center for Public Policy. Um, that is an area we, we, we want to build, what's that? A, um, a lecture theater for that. Mm -hmm. And that will be in uh, memory, I think, of a graduate of NCU that spent quite a number of years in government and then spent his last days at NCU. As a matter of fact, he was in charge for a while of the foundation there at NCU, Dr. Neville Gallimore. If there was one person who put his money where his, his mouth where his, his money where his mouth is, yeah. that was Neville Gallimore. I remember right. teaching several students who he sponsored, and he was always present, both himself and his wife. They were always present and active. You knew that he breathed NCU. That's right. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, so this is what the website will allow you to do. You can go on, you can visit, you can learn about the different projects. So you're not just giving blindly. Because if you give blindly, trust me, you're just going to drop a few cents. But when you understand the projects, when you understand the heart of what is going to happen, you are going to not just give money. You're going to start thinking about, how am I building the kingdom of God? I need to will this piece of land over here to NCU. I need to think of my grandchildren who are going to come afterwards. And when I'm making my will, I put NCU there. That's right. That's right. I am not just going to give what I can afford to give, but I'm going to use my influence. So the people who are in the corporate world, who have big organizations and companies, who are looking for people to help, I am going to use my influence to push them in this direction. So the website actually gives you a handle to help and to invest in lives. You've heard those stories. You invest in NCU, you invest in lives. So once we proclaim this website launched, it's a ready, set, go thing. You're putting your hand on that sled and you're going to give a big push so that it gets going down so quickly. You have to hop on. I, I, I wonder if they still do that. <laughs> Doc, you used to do that? You used to hop the trucks? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't know about that, dear? No, I don't know nothing about that. I know, the, the only thing I've hopped on is my bed. Oh, boy, you're missing life. You're missing life. So, Doc, I, because of your association, with Audrey Marks. Mm -hmm. She is so passionate about NCU, and I recall that they gave her an honorary doctorate. That is correct. And let me set the record straight, um, which is that I probably have worked with uh, seven or eight, if not more, ambassadors mm -hmm. over the years, and they have all been passionate about Northern Caribbean University. Yes. And, but she has taken it to another level. Yes, yes, yes. So I am going to give you the distinct honor of, on behalf of Her Excellency, to proclaim this website open. She would not leave it up to you alone. I know she sent you the words as to how to do it. So I'm going to invite you to do that on her behalf. Okay. Uh, Dr. Lincoln Edwards, President of Northern Caribbean University, 
Dr. Bertram Melbourne, Chair of NCU International Development Foundation, members of the NCU IDF Board, or Northern Caribbean University family, friends, and well-wishers. I am pleased to join you and other esteemed members of the diaspora community to celebrate the launch of the Northern Caribbean University International Development Foundation's website. The launch of this website is a watershed moment in the life of the foundation with a place on the internet, the foundation's connectivity will increase exponentially. Of course, this will redound to the benefit of the foundation, NCU, and Jamaica. It has been a pleasure working with the foundation and our diaspora community and the delight to see the foundation grow from strength to strength. Ladies and gentlemen, we must applaud the outstanding program, programs sorry, that the foundation has executed and cheer for these, I'm sorry, for those earmarked for the future and for funding with plans for a robust endowment fund and the activation of numerous development projects, including the rescue project, NCU's future is bright. It is, a, it is as bright as the minds of the students attending the, this noble institution. And with the foundation's help, these bright minds will go further and faster in the journey of excellence, the journey to excellence. It is therefore with great pleasure and a sense of achievement that I now launch www.ncuadvance Dot com as the official website for NCU International Development Foundation. I urge all alumni, friends in the diaspora, and well-wishers to join hands, hearts, and resources to contribute to NCU in its continued success. We're at the start, Theo. We're at the start. At the start. How I do you we feel? Need, we need to say that website one more time. www.ncuadvance.org. That's right. right. That's, that's the website um, here on the screen. What a time. How do you feel to, be, to have your hand on the sled? It's, it's, it's a good place to be. Listen, man. I, be. I need you to show everybody, Doc. It's launched. Hey. It launched. <laughs> <laughs> and so I want you to just, I want all, I, I want yes, us to celebrate yes. and commemorate the fact that it's launched. Just hold your cell phones up because that's, that's yes, what we have yes. it on. Those in the audience, just hold your cell phones up. Those of you who are at home, I want you to get online. You heard the website. It's launched. It's launched. You are now a part of this great, exciting move. It's launched. Hey, they're taking our picture. We're pushing off. Hands up. W phone up, phone up, phone up, phone up. Phone up. Phone up yes. It's launched. It's launched. It's launched. And so I invite you, don't waste any time now to go and study the projects. They're all good. Are coming from River Bottom. And, and subscribe, subscribe. I think subscribe. it's going to be important to subscribe, yes. to stay, stay abreast of what's going on. Um, it, you're, you're going to get information, you're going to be in the know. I think it's important for us to know where your donation goes as well, right? Yes. You know, the web developers yes. made sure, Theo, I mean, she did such an awesome, awesome job, Miss Mighty uh, Nugent, and uh, she made sure that once you went on the website, you had to register don't cost you anything but you'd register all you've got to do is to put your information on and just go in and then you can decide to give
give and to search and to be informed and to learn. But right now, I want all of those of you who are listening to don't even think about it. Just go on right now and try it out. Just try it out for me. Let's give something. Give something big. Let's give a big push. Let's get this thing going. We don't want to. Uh, thank you, thank you. Move off. Come on. Uh, so let's uh, say it again. www.ncuadvance.org. It's right there on the screen. You won't forget it. We'll say it a couple more times before we get let's to the end of the program. Let's say it together. Doc, let's say it together. Let's say it together. N N w w dot n c u advance dot org. org. So get there now and give us a push start. Well, we're, we're here um, as we begin to land the plane. By the, by the way, Theo, I just got a, um, a text that says, well done. The launch was successful. May it accomplish the purpose. That's good. Wonderful. That's wonderful. And That's good. The, the caller wanted me to pass on his congratulations to you, Patrice. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so excited to be a part of this. When Indeed. history is written, it's going to have my picture with my phone up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, well, as we begin to, 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 to land this plane, we have a couple presentations here coming up. We have the 24th president of Northern Caribbean University um, that will give a, a quick presentation here. And then we also have a presentation from Dr. Bryce, who is a friend of NCU, yes. giving a testimonial on why I give. You know what's interesting? Both gentlemen, Dr. Lincoln Edwards, and Dr. Errol Bryce knew me as a child. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, wow. It's, it's coming from a long way. Yes, and, yes, and, yes. I am, and the interesting thing is that neither of them attended NCU. And that's what I'm saying. You don't have to feel like an outsider because you didn't graduate from there. More than likely, you've heard sermons from individuals who've been there. You've been taught by individuals who've been there. You've been influenced by positive people who have studied there. It's now your chance to join in. And so both Dr. Edwards, the 24th president, and Dr. Errol Bryce are passionate supporters in kind, thought, energy, and prayers. And yes, they're dollars to NCU. So it's worth listening to them. In other words, they come from River Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As president of Northern Caribbean University, I bring you warm greetings from Jamaica and the love and appreciation of our students, our workers, our alumni, our board of governors, and other stakeholders of the institution. It is always a delight to interact with you, our supporters. You are part of our NCU family. We appreciate your good wishes, prayers, and all you contribute in cash and kind to keep hope alive among our students, as well as to make NCU a place to make their dreams come true. When NCU needs you, you are always there. From its inception more than a century ago, the institution has survived and overcame obstacles through the love and support of alumni and friends. We look forward to your continued support through the NCU International Development Foundation, which the university has established as our major fundraising arm. You can learn more about the NCU International Development Foundation at ncuadvance.org. That ncuadvance.org. The NCU and the NCU International Development Foundation partnership promises to be an amazing experience with your help, your prayers, and yes, your good wishes. Thank you for supporting our most precious asset at NCU, our students. Thank you for supporting this event and for visiting ncuadvance.org. Invest now in lives at NCU. I'm Dr. Earl Bryce, and I want to share with you the most devastating, yet the most transformative day of my entire life. I couldn't be more than nine or 10 years of age when I went to school for the first time in my life 
bare feet. Yeah, that's it, no shoes. I grew up with my grandmother, who the World Health Organization described as food insecure, living on less than $2 a day. There were days when a meal was a miracle from God. This week, my shoes fell apart, finally. I was going to school bare feet, no shoes. Each step, each effort, each step was a giant effort. My head was bowed and I was a bundle of shame. I was petrified, fearful of the laughter from the students who sometimes can be merciless. The elementary school I went to was started by either a Baptist church or an Anglican school church. It was a church school and they started every morning with devotion. My plan was to go to devotion, then to class, then go right home. Something happened in devotion that changed my entire life. I walked out of the devotion on cloud nine. The shame was gone. The fear was gone. I was hopping and playing. There were games like Papillari and Kechishubi and playing marbles, just like I, you know, the nine and, nine and 10 year old kid. And nobody ever even commented on my beer feet. It took 40 years of studying, practicing, and teaching medicine, neuroscience, and trauma-informed care to understand what happened. See, God had compassion on me. That morning, they sang William Copper's Heart My Soul, It Is The Lord. The third verse read, Can a woman's tender care cease towards the child she bears? Yes, she may forgetful be, yet I will always remember thee. I committed this verse to memory from that morning. God's love and compassion changed my brain. Christian education touched you in ways you have no idea. You were touched by Northern Caribbean University. Now, Northern Caribbean University needs your help. Here's the problem. Jamaica gets 60% of its income from tourism. COVID shut down the, the, the tourist industry in Jamaica for two years. We need a rescue fund, a bridge fund, of 50 million US dollars to rescue the university. University devastated by this loss of income in two years, tried their best to survive. We need to build an endowment fund of 200 million US dollars so that this will never happen again. Here's where you come in. We need you to pray daily for God's intervention. Everything happens with prayer. We need you to have compassion. I'm talking about bending over and bandaging the wounds. Stay engaged until the goals are achieved. We want you to go to the website ncuadvance.org. They are the mechanism to receive all your funding, your sacrifice, your compassion is right there. ncuadvance.org. We ask you to get involved. Move with compassion. Pray. Stay engaged until we reach the goal. Wow. Such an inspirational story, such passion. When you've been touched by something, you make a difference to touch something else. That's awesome. You know, I, I just want to focus a little bit, uh, Theo, on the website again. What's so exciting? What is, what's something that you particularly like about the website that you're anxious to go dig into when we leave here? 
So, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in this legacy book project. Doc, mm -hmm. you want to give us some context on the legacy book? Uh, there's a 100 years of NCU at the Coolsworthy property. As a matter of fact, I think this year is the 100th anniversary of graduations. Mm. And so, uh, as part of the launch, we have this legacy book that will be 200 pages, 100 pages or so to the history of NCU, and 100 pages that will be given to alums to be able to tell their NCU stories That's good. That's good. Uh, in the book. And we are asking that as they give their story, we are asking for a contribution for their story to be included in the book. It's not a charge, we are not charging, we are asking for a contribution mm -hmm. to support NCU to be included so in you this mean, book. I can talk about my time sitting on the seat of the scorn. For sure, me. sure, <laughs> sure. I, I can talk sure. about jumping on the basketball court and leaving with a sure, bloody Sure, <laughs> sure. I, 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 I just in Dr. Ruin poetic form, wrote my NCU story. Wow, wow, wow. wow. That's beautiful, because NCU is so much more than veggie dance and sinker. Right. You know, there it's, there's, there's quite a bit more. Yeah. And the stories to be told, this is your opportunity, this is your portal to get your story told as you yes. invest in lives. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I think the last one I'll tell is when my mom told me, you can't go on the campus with, with corn growing your hair. <laughs> 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 but um, Sister Patrice, tell us a little bit about the Celebration Garden page. The Celebration Garden is something I am passionate about because it speaks to a memorial. There are so many persons who have passed through NCU and I remember the pain I personally felt I used to go hang out with Pastor Vaz, you know, KG mm -hmm. Vaz. Mm -hmm. I used to go hang out with him after he had retired, Doc. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day I was going over and I said to a theology major at the time, you want to come with me to go visit Pastor KG Vaz? And he said, who is that? I was so hurt. Wow. He yes, hadn't even yes. died yet, and they yeah. did not remember who he was. Yeah. I was yeah. so pained. And when I think of the legendary persons mm -hmm. who have passed through there and the contributions that they have met, made and the inspiration that their lives can give, I am excited about the Celebration Garden because yes. it allows loved ones to commemorate the memory of these outstanding individuals. Right. Anybody who you know and love, who's been influenced by NCU, here is a place that you can pay for a commemorative stone in a beautiful setting that will not, that is not a graveyard. <laughs> it's not a graveyard. It's an inspirational space for prayer and reflection and, and dreaming and build, just thinking, build, developing your passion. I, I, I just say, Patrice, it's, it's celebration, it is. not memorial. Yes. So you don't have to be dead to be included exactly. there. Exactly. So your memory, your influence, your power, your impact can be set in stone right there. And you can get the information off this website That's to participate right. in such a way. That's good. No, this is good. So just before we go, we want to present one last story to you. The we day have I to die. end. We have to end. Man. We have to end. I have to go and see my all three All good things ones. must come to an end, <laughs> right? <laughs> but all good things must come to an end. But let's present this story. The Day I Died by Owen Blacker Ellis. The Day I Died. I am Owen Blacker Ellis, but growing up, my pet name was Keith. You know, every Jamaican have a pet name, even though you're not really a pet, my pet name was Keith. And me, Keith, lived with my auntie, Becca, and my six siblings in Trenchtown. My mom lived in Montego Bay, my dad in Toronto. My mother was a dancer. Not on a pole, but a dancer. <laughs> one summer, early one summer, my brother asked her what in Montego Bay stay with mommy. And auntie said, message comes, so he must come back for some important cadet meeting. And I must go to Montego Bay and tell him to come back. I said, Auntie, he couldn't send a telegram. She said, telegrams are for important matters like life and death. Take the train to Montego Bay and give her the message. So the next morning, 
I wake up early, and they wake me up early, take my bus, downtown Kingston, take the train to go to Montego Bay. Eat for my ticket, buy a cheese crunches and an orange juice, and I relax on the coach on the train. The car she blew and the train chug chug and start up. I pull my cheese crunches, bust my orange juice box, start to read my old newspaper, and enjoying the journey. I even about to start doze off. Journey going on nice. As the train about to approach the doing the bridge near six miles before they reach Rocky Park train station, I suddenly hear the car she blow and hit so loud and the train brakes start screech and my coach start rumble and wobble and make enough knife. People start scream and ball and shout. Before you know it, the train go boom boom bam 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 bam. The train derail. <laughs> my heart start beat, me think me dead, but I was quite alive. <laughs> and as you know, you might not know. Good story. Spread fast, a bad story spread faster than the truth of lie. So by this time, and today the people that we see are selfish, you say the train crash, people get injured, and one woman dead. And they put on one everlasting ball. The Lord, look how me send the boy kid, go to him dead, Lord, and mercy for me. By this time, Auntie and all our vendor friends, them lock up shop and go all over them. You say the, the, them, them, them send helicopter and some folks are elected who were injured to hospital. She go KPH and check. Nobody is there by my name or description. She go UW and check. There's nobody there named Keith. No boy there. She say, okay. So she and her friend them start ball and wheel even louder. And then go down to the scene of the crash or derailment. A crash. Them look, them don't see me and them conclude that I must be under the one coach that they turn over completely, so me dead. And at the same time, I went to the telegraph office and said, now, two, two telegram, one to my to go with my mother, said, train crash, keep dead, come quickly. <laughs> one to my father in Toronto, train crash, keep dead, come quickly. And them start to ball. By this time, they had sent an engine from the train station to pull the two coaches that never really turn over back to the station. So I was there. I wait to get my ticket refunded. <laughs> and me I wait. And me I wait. And me I wait till me drop asleep. When I wake up back, train station locked down, place start get dark, so I begin to make my way home. When I come off for the number 19 bus at the corner of 3rd Street and train and Westwood in Trenchtown, I step off to one everlasting excitement camp. And people start looking at me and wait, but hold on. Oh, but wait, oh, but hey, 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 oh, um. I walk from the bus stop to my yard and one cloud of confusion, excitement, and people are looking at me and feel drop boop. <laughs> when I reach my gate, the yard full of people. Fish start fry, chocolate tea start boil, rum start drink, sunky start sing. One big wake was in swing. I walked into my own nine night setup. <laughs> and it was a mixture of confusion and relief because I turned up back like a prodigal son or not word from the dead. Well, when the prodigal son came back, they killed the potted calf. And he nearly killed me beaten. Cause she waste her money, waste her tears, send her telegram, said train crash, keep dead, come quickly. And here I was, train never crash, train the rail, keep never dead, not even injury. And I came back not too early. I am blacker, that is my true story. So uh, many beautiful stories, so many beautiful stories to be told. And that's what the NCU Development Foundation is all about. Yeah. We want to thank all of you for having been a part of this wonderful launch. Those of you who have given, and we're so grateful for the push start, and it's not too late, we're still chugging down. So get on now and give your money right away so that we can have a good, good push. Those of you who are watching online, it's so exciting to have had you here tonight. Indeed, indeed. And just to keep in mind, there are various ways to give. You could give via PayPal, give via Zelle. I believe there's Cash App. You can make a check out as well to the NCU International Development Foundation. But certainly, if all else fails, send an email on the website and we'll ensure that you get the right information. That is correct. And tonight's launch 
would not have been a success without the the NCU International Development Foundation board members, many of whom are here now, and I know all of them are viewing in one form or the other. So let's give it up for the foundation uh, board members. Kanik Mighty Nugent, the website designer. You know you couldn't have a website launch without a website designer. And then you have the NCU Corporate Communication, Marketing and Publications Relations, CCMPR. They have played a great role in ensuring that this has happened this evening. Indeed. Tonight we also want to thank uh, Ms. Denise Dixon, our producer for tonight's show. If you saw us looking around, she kept us on task. Mr. Carell wholeness um, of whole tones he was a productions and technical consultant tonight we also want to thank Colin Sandy um, the streaming engineer and how could we have done it without the great entertaining package prepared by Deborah Earhart direct and producer of what's your story Jamaica Chris Daly of IT consultant Metropolitan Media Ministries executive producer Nigel Jemison and Marva Shand McIntosh awesome awesome job that they have done i think it's so important that everything we began with prayer we should end with prayer amen before we pray go ahead theo i just want to let everyone know remember tonight is the forerunner the real thing comes in august the, this is the website that tells you about what is coming the foundation will be launched in august and you've got to be there you can watch this program online until april 1st so i know you've enjoyed it and when you do it when you enjoy something you lick all 10 fingers so you have a chance to lick your fingers over and over watch it share it send to people and keep giving us the push start so that our sled can keep going you are a part of this. There's no backing out. We forgot to tell you at the beginning that there is no reverse gear in the sled. Mm. So you're in already. You just got to keep going with us. Great to have been with you this evening. And we are going to close with prayer by our chairman. Go ahead, Doc. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence with us this evening. We thank you for what was accomplished. We thank you for this website. We pray that it will redound to the good of the foundation and that through this vehicle, much funds will be gained and for the furtherance of your cause at NCU, the education of young people for a future in this world and for in the world to come. So now, bless the website, bless each of us who was present, Thank you for the work of our hosts and co-hosts. And now, take us home safely, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Theo, say hello to mommy. Yeah, mommy's online. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. God bless you.